Today, we're talking about brown and dark spots on the face. Did you know that there's many different types of conditions that can cause spots like this to appear? And what's interesting is that all of these conditions require sometimes completely different treatments. So today we'll talk about the five most common causes of brown and dark spots that I see in my clinic. Hi, my name is Dr. Nick. I'm a board certified dermatologist and I'm passionate about science, active ingredients, and bringing you really good value. I will never recommend you something that won't work. And on my channel, I like to dive sometimes kind of deep into the science of how things work, why do we put things on our skin that we do, and I want to empower you to make your own informed choices about your personal skincare routine. Please consider hitting the like button and subscribing to my channel to get more updates and more free education about skincare, different kinds of skin concerns, and go on this journey with me. Number one cause of brown spots on the face, acne blackheads. This is one of the most common concerns that I see in my clinic, especially among my younger patients. So what do these look like? I'm sure that a lot of you can probably tell what these are without me explaining them, but let's take a look at some photos together. So here is a very classic example of blackheads, which are also known as open comedones on somebody's forehead. You can see that these are also intermixed with inflamed spots that look red. Commonly these are called pimples. In dermatology we call these pustules. While blackheads are common on the forehead, you can also see them other locations on the face, such as the cheeks or around the nose. Now let's take a look together at what these are. On the left you can see a normal hair follicle and normal sebaceous glands which make sebum. On the right you can see how the open comedone forms. The hair follicle gets plugged with different types of junk, bacteria and old sebum. And what happens is when this interacts with the air, it oxidizes and becomes black. The great news is that you can treat your acne blackheads at home using simple over-the-counter medications. The first active ingredient that I'll talk about is benzoyl peroxide. Benzoyl peroxide is a fantastic medication. It acts against the bacteria that are in that plugged hair follicle that cause blackheads to form. Benzoyl peroxide comes in different forms. So one of my favorites is a benzoyl peroxide wash. This product by CeraVe has 4% benzoyl peroxide and the way I would use this is, you know, you can apply it as a face wash once daily or twice daily to the entire face. And it's important to let it sit for a couple seconds, like five to 10 seconds on the face before washing it off so that the medication has time to actually do its magic. Benzoyl peroxide also comes as a lotion. I find this to be extremely effective as spot treatment for inflammatory lesions, and this can also help with black spots. This Neutrogena product is one of my favorites. It has micronized benzoyl peroxide, which means that the particles are very small and they can more easily go inside the abnormal hair follicle. Now, another type of medication that's really helpful for treating blackheads and acne are retinoids. Retinoids are creams that should be used at night. And the way they work for acne is by making sure that the hair follicle develops normally and matures normally to prevent things like clogged pores and clogged hair follicles from happening. Adapalene gel, or Differin, is a type of retinoid medication that is well suited to treat acne. It is available over the counter and can be used as a nightly treatment to prevent blackheads. The second common cause of brown spots, sunspots. People call these different names. Sunspots, age spots, lentigos, freckles, they all mean the same thing and they describe the same thing. These are flat depositions of pigment in the very top layers of the skin. And usually these are caused by chronic and repeated sun exposure. These types of spots are easy to recognize and diagnose. They should be completely flat and they're usually distributed in sun exposed areas of the face like the back of the nose and the cheeks. I recommend a simple three-step routine to treat sunspots. Number one is to use a vitamin C serum in the morning. Number two, to apply broad spectrum SPF 30 plus sunscreen also in the morning. And lastly, number three, a retinol or retinoid at night. 
Vitamin C is a strong antioxidant, and it acts as a brightening agent for the skin. Vitamin C can help improve the appearance of sunspots. I personally use this product in the morning, applied to my forehead, nose, and cheeks. Sun protection is very important to prevent sunspots from darkening. I like this tinted sunscreen from Ulta MD. The tint provides additional protection from visible light. I apply this product after the vitamin C serum. Retinols are a very important component of sunspot treatment. Retinols increase the skin's natural renewal and boost collagen production. They act to lighten the appearance of sunspots. I recommend applying retinols at night, since these creams make the face sensitive to sunlight. To treat sunspots, I really recommend sticking to a routine with good over-the-counter products like we discussed and really be patient with it. It can take a couple of months for the pigment to improve. Now, if you've tried all of this and you still want to achieve better results, you can always consult with a board-certified dermatologist to discuss alternative treatment options. There are some cosmetic procedures that are very effective for this type of pigmentation. These include chemical peels, as well as lasers, both picosecond lasers to treat specific sunspots, as well as fractional non-ablative lasers to treat the entire face. It's always a good idea to consult with a trained professional to really de de determine a personalized and safe treatment option for you. The third common cause of brown spots we will discuss is melasma. Melasma looks somewhat similar to sunspots, but there are a few key differences. Let's take a look at some photos first. You can see that the melasma is more patchy. So compared to freckles or sunspots, which are individual separate lesions, melasma involves larger areas of dispigmentation. Melasma is driven by sun exposure, but also hormones, especially estrogen which is why melasma is a much more common concern among female patients. Here are the three steps to treat melasma. Number one, good sun protection. We already discussed using an SPF 30 plus sunscreen for sunspots and the idea here is the same. It's really important to use sunscreen daily and helpful to use a tinted sunscreen because the tint will provide protection against visible light. Number two is to address the hormonal component. For female patients who take an oral contraceptive, I recommend them to consult with their primary care doctor or their OBGYN to see if they can discontinue for an alternative contraceptive method or switch to an oral contraceptive that contains less estrogen or no estrogen. Number three is to use over-the-counter topicals that have active ingredients that can decrease the amount of pigment in the skin. These treatments include hydroquinone, retinols, azelaic acid, kojic acid, and tranexamic acid. All of these components are active ingredients that in research have shown to decrease melanin production, increase skin turnover, and help with improving pigment in the skin. Hydroquinone is a lightening agent that I would recommend using under the supervision of a doctor. The reason being is that in cases of overuse of hydroquinone, the medication can actually leave deposits in the skin, which causes a condition called ochronosis. This is easy to prevent by using the medication in a safe and controlled manner, so I do recommend following with somebody closely to prevent any unwanted side effects. The fourth common cause of brown spots is an interesting condition called DPN. It stands for Dermatosis Papulosa Nigra, which translates from Latin as dark spots on the skin. This is a variant of a common benign skin condition called a keratosis, which is a benign skin lesion that is raised and can appear anywhere on the skin, including the face or the body. DPN is a special type of keratosis that really has a predilection for the face, especially the temples and the cheeks. This is common among my patients who are of Hispanic, Asian, or African-American origin. Unfortunately, this type of skin lesion is tricky to treat. Because it is a raised skin lesion, topical treatments aren't necessarily very effective against it. This type of treatment does require a in-office procedure to be done that uses very gentle electrical current applied via a fine tip to the skin. This procedure is called electrofulguration and this is commonly done at your dermatologist's office. It is important to know that this procedure 
has its own risks associated with it. Whenever you're applying a lot of energy to the skin, it can cause light spots to appear. So I would really recommend doing this in somebody who has experience performing this procedure in a variety of different skin tones. Aftercare is also very important. After this type of procedure, it's important to make sure your skin is protected from the sun, to avoid darkening of the spots that were just treated, and using a moisturizing ointment like Vaseline or Petrolatum ointment to make sure that the healing process goes as smoothly as possible. Now finally, fifth most common cause of dark spots. This cause I put last, but definitely not least, and this is perhaps one of the most common concerns that I see in the clinic. This is called post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, or PIH. PIH really forms after your skin has been inflamed, and as your skin heals, the body releases pigment in the areas that were previously inflamed. This happens all over the body. Let's say you have a cut, and you know you were cooking, you cut yourself with a knife. If you ever notice this, sometimes this cut heals with a dark spot. So that's an example of PIH, or post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. You can get these dark spots on the face. Let's say you had acne that healed up and it leaves a dark spot. The good news about this condition, this is almost always self-resolving. What it takes is a good amount of time and good sun protection to make sure that the dark spots don't darken any further. But the key to addressing PIH, or post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, is to address the issue that made it happen in the first place. So for example, if you have acne or rosacea, inflammatory skin conditions that are not well controlled and they're leaving dark spots as the pimples heal, then the root cause of the dark spots should be addressed, which is the acne, for example. Thank you for sticking with me. This concludes our video of the five most common causes of brown spots that I see in the clinic. And I hope that now you feel much more better equipped to diagnose these kind of conditions and treat them at home.